don't wait. You need to get out there and be proactive. And you know, if you don't know how to do something, YouTube's a wonderful thing. And don't tell me that you don't know that because I know assistants who've been asked to put HR policy in place who've gone, sure, no problem, and have run off to look at YouTube to find out how to do it. So the world is your oyster, but you're the one who's got to be proactive and make it happen. The robots are coming, but embrace the opportunities because I actually think it's going to mean that you're able to do your job at an even higher level. So that was number two, the robots, AI, and the fourth industrial revolution. But now we come on to the third part. And of course, this is COVID. And you know, COVID has been chaotic for everybody. None of us are quite sure what we need to do. Your bosses are out there saving the world, in some cases, saving their businesses and trying to protect their staff. And we've got the assistants divided into two camps right now. We've got assistants that are sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know how I'm ever going to do all this work. Huh, it's a little like what I told you about the recession at the beginning, right? When the middle management left and you ended up with all their work and you had to teach yourself how to do it. So please remember that when we come out the other end, because obviously now is not the time to ask for a pay rise, but actually keep notes of the things that you're taking on board. Because last time you got no more remuneration at the end of it, and nor did you get any training. And you want to make sure that that isn't the case this time round. So what I would say to you about COVID is that either you're really busy or you're sitting there going, I have no clue what I'm meant to be doing and I'm really scared because when we come out the other end of this, they're going to let me go because they're not going to see my value. Listen to me for two seconds, okay? If your executive is there trying to save the world, and don't forget that they are in totally uncharted waters themselves. They have absolutely no clue what's going on at all and they're trying to move into a position where they've got this. If you're coming to them and saying, what do you want me to do? They are going to be, of course, saying to you, whatever it is we pay you to do, because they're still trying to get their heads around it. Let me tell you something. You are the chaos tamers. You are just phenomenal at taking that chaos and sorting it out. And there has never been a more important time for you to do that. You are the queens and kings of process and procedure. And you know what? I am a brilliant CEO. I'm great at coming up with new ideas. But when I say I've had a new idea, Matthew, my assistant, goes pale because he knows he's going to have to be the one to implement it and work out what the process is to get there. I would rather stick pins in my eyes than have to put process in place. But you really know how to do that. And what that means is that there is a huge value to you being in the room and adding your voice to what it is that they are trying to do. You can't be afraid anymore to speak up. You need to. And a lot of assistants have told me that they're really enjoying the fact that you're on Zoom calls because you don't have all that body language and power play that you did if you were in a boardroom beforehand. You know, the one where the woman who's in marketing sweeps into the room and tries to look powerful all over the place. Just isn't happening anymore. So all of you being in the same size boxes should help you to find your voice and speak up and to talk about the things that you are able to add or to insert your opinion. You might not think it's wanted, but I'm telling you right now, if you get this right, they're really going to understand what it is that you're capable of doing. Where are the processes that need sorting? Where are the procedures that need to be putting into place that are new? because of COVID, how can you help? Can you go and do research into what other businesses are doing to get their businesses back to work or what's working in terms of keeping morale high? What are you able to do that's going to make sure that your executive can get on with doing what they're doing to the best of their ability? You have two totally different roles, you and your executive. And I think it's really important that you understand that you're employed by the business, not by your executive, in order to make sure that they are supersonic. And I love to explain this by talking about Belbin. And Belbin is a psychometric testing system that was developed by Meredith Belbin back in the 1920s. And what it says is how people fit into teams. And the reason that I love it is because assistants always fall into one category, executives always fall into a totally different category, 
And it's a really clear way to show the way that you should be working together. So let's start by talking about the executives then. And the executives will usually fall into one of these three categories, either the plant or the shaper or the resource investigator. Let me explain what that means. The plants are the ones who are really cranial. Think about somebody who is really bright, really great at coming up with new product or new ideas, not so great at communicating. You know, those people that should be locked in a high tower and only allowed to hand ideas down for somebody else to interpret. The shapers are the ones who are really autocratic. What they like to do is to be able to tell people how things should be done, and it's my way or the highway. And if you give them a sheet with bullet points on it, they're probably bored by the time you get to the third one. And finally, you've got your resource investigator. And they are wonderful because they're driving things forward and coming up with new revenue streams and making sure they're leading from the front and everyone follows them but they couldn't complete or finish anything if their life depended on it. And if you have an executive like that, you're probably running down the corridor after them saying, come back, come back. You're doing a meeting in 10 minutes. And by the way, I needed your board report two days ago and you still haven't done it. So there's your executives. On the other side, you've got your assistants and the assistants fall into team worker, complete a finisher and implementer. So 